Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, you meet the founder of a company that is a game changer when it comes to the early detection of cancer. His story just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, all families are touched by cancer in some form or fashion, whether it be skin cancer or something uh, much more deadly. Um, the, the young man who's on my show next knows this very well because he lost his sister to cancer and now he's come up with a game changer when it comes to early detection. Sumet Ray is in the studio. He's the founder of Cancer Check Labs. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I appreciate it. Well, I'm sorry for your loss, but share first your journey. What, what happened with your sister? Well, my only sibling, my younger sister, was diagnosed with cancer 14 years ago and, you know, battled cancer pretty aggressively for about a year and a half, at which point she unfortunately passed away. From that point of time, I became fairly obsessed with wanting to cure cancer and began studying it, you know, obsessively and exhaustively. And what I learned during that journey was what I believe the key to be to curing cancer lies in something known as a CTC which is a circulating tumor cell that's shed from solid tumors in the blood. And so the first step to actually working towards a cure is early detection. And so what we've developed over the past many years is a test that can detect circulating tumor cells, whole viable cells in your blood from any solid tumor uh, that may be shedding to hopefully detect early and screen for any cancer. Sure, you're absolutely saving lives. We're gonna pull up the website and as we scroll down the website, let's talk about how your company differs from other solutions that are out there. So it's quite a bit different. So so today there's kind of, you know, two primary methods that people are using for screening for cancer um, that are coming up beyond the five standard ones. The standard ones today are mammograms for breast cancer, lung CT for lung cancer, PSA for prostate cancer, colonoscopy for colorectal cancer, and pap smears for cervical cancer. The problem with that is even if you were to do all of those screens, you wouldn't even have touched half the cancers. You still have not screened for liver, pancreatic, bladder, brain, skin, et cetera. And so what we've developed here is a test that can screen for all solid tumors and their subtypes based on a blood draw. And the way it does it is fundamentally different than other alternative screens available today. Today, there are MRI imaging platforms that are coming about to try to screen you for cancer. The issue with those is the tumor has to grow big enough to be able to be imaged and photographed, at which point it's often at a later stage. The key to carrying cancer is catching it at an earlier stage. We like to detect cancer at the cellular level when it's very, very early. And circulating tumor cells or CTCs have already been shown in the research to be detected as early as stage zero. Whereas when you scan a tumor, you would never be able to likely capture it at that stage. The other tests that exist for screening for cancer today use biomarkers or signals that are just you know, fractured data points and they don't actually have the entire cell to look at, unlike us. So we capture the entire cell. We are able to actually stain it and put it on a slide, hand it to a pathologist to visually inspect just like they would a tissue biopsy and then render the result. Wow. Okay, so walk me through a scenario. If a young man decided to have his blood draw um, drawn from you and, and you're available nationally, and I understand like a, a, a first blood draw might cost less than a thousand bucks. A young man gets his blood drawn, um, sends it in. It takes how many business days? So it'll take two to three business days for us to process that blood draw. The, the blood draw that comes in, we process it, we use filtration technology to isolate and extract the circulating tumor cells. Uh, in most cases, we don't expect to find any. We expect the result to be negative. Most people, fortunately, don't have live active cancer, otherwise we all wouldn't be alive. Now, in the unfortunate instance that we do find circulating tumor cells, 
those are likely shed from an underlying primary tumor, whether it's lung cancer, breast, colorectal, pancreatic, liver, bladder, stomach, brain, all the organ tumors. In that case, we will ask for a second blood trial where we will again filter out the circulating tumor cells. But the second time, we will run downstream analysis to look at certain expression on those tumor cells, the pattern of which will point us to the probable and likely source organ. Is this coming from your brain, your breast, your ovaries, your cervix, your prostate, your colon, so on and so forth. That's amazing. And then if it, it did come back um, you know, positive a second time, you're referring them to the, uh, go see a physician? So the patients are able to log into the site, the portal, and get their results, at which point they should absolutely consult their primary care physician as to what the course of action should be going forward. On a negative result, it would probably be routine screening and just being diligent and on top of that, which a primary care physician would be able to tell you the frequency of which based on your risk factors. In a positive result, they'll probably do more analysis, which may include you know, imaging, perhaps even a biopsy if they suspect something very problematic, uh, and perhaps a referral to a medical oncologist. And uh, full disclosure, we've been working with Sumet and his team for the last few weeks. And I remember when Princess Kate came out with her announcement about cancer, I instantly got on the phone with you and said, listen, I'm going to put you out to the media. And you ended up doing a number of interviews across the country. Yes. My favorite is the one that you did on Fox TV National. Let's go ahead and roll that. On live now from Fox with the announcement of Kate Middleton. Uh, says she has cancer at the age of 42 years old. Uh, King Charles saying in a statement, proud of Catherine for her courage. Again, we are going to be continuing uh, to showcase this and really talk about the major news story of the day on Live Now from Fox. And again, uh, we appreciate all our viewers continuing to be here as well during this very, very big moment on Live Now from Fox. I do want to bring in our next guest here of this hour. I'm Stuart Rye, the CEO and founder of Cancer Track Labs, uh, an early detection, cancer screening, blood test. And so, you know, just heard about the Kate, the Kate News and um, Princess Kate, very sad. Uh, it's very difficult to know exactly what she has at the moment. Obviously, we know that she had stomach cancer, or, uh, sorry, stomach surgery earlier, and we're hoping that it's not a gastric cancer that's spreading. Uh, it is good that they started chemo, and they're getting there somewhat early, hopefully, and they've been on top of it. The key to curing cancer generally is early detection, so it really comes down to when they've found it, at what stage, how early versus how late. That's truly what's going to impact the probability of her survival. Yeah, that is so, so true. We're, uh, you know, early detection always key uh, for this moment. And uh, when we first heard that uh, Kate Middleton was going to the hospital, that was back in January. And she stayed in the hospital for 13 days. Uh, is, is, is that the type of situation where when someone I is going that uh, a doctor may see something that in a checkup they uh, don't expect? And is that how a lot of these th things are uncovered? Oftentimes, unfortunately, yes, uh, you know, when they're having, typically when that happens, there's symptoms. So she was probably experiencing some form of symptoms from, from the disease. She went in to get checked. Uh, they found something that they fe probably felt needed acute and immediate attention. And as a result, they likely admitted her, uh, did the procedure and kept her there for, for weeks. Uh, you know, with regular screening, if, if you kind of go in for a mammogram or if you go for a blood test like ours or whatever the case might be, there they'll usually detect something. They'll do more, you know, downstream workups, more imaging, more blood work, uh, and you'll come in over a period of time. So, so the fact that she went in uh, probably was symptomatic, which is what caused her to likely go in and then stayed there, was admitted, and went into an immediate procedure uh, likely means that there's probably some advancement and something of concern that needed to be addressed immediately. Uh, now they're obviously seeing that whatever they did at that time may have been insufficient, which is why she's going through chemo. She needs further treatment to try to eradicate the cancer in its entirety. 
And, uh, of course, this is happening uh, to someone uh, that uh, is in the public eye of millions and millions of people. Uh, follow her story, and uh, the, the royal family is such a, a big moment for so many people. Uh, do you think, with this announcement, that she had the courage to put this video out, what do you think this will do for other women uh, t in hopes of uh, trying to get uh, preventative screenings? I think it will help them. And, and I think that's her goal with putting this out is so, you know, having personally lost my sister and it, which is what drove me to start this early screening cancer detection company, you know, you never want to see anyone that you love, friends, family, go through something like this. And I think once you've been experienced or had touched cancer in your life and you've had to deal with that with yourself personally, with someone you love, with a parent, a sibling, a child, you become very sensitive to it. And I think because she's going through it, she's also become very sensitive to other people going through a similar plight. So I think her goal in putting forth that video was to encourage people to get more early screening, detect it early, be able to address it so that they're not at a stage where unfortunately they walk into a hospital, they have to be admitted, go into stomach surgery, follow up with rounds of chemo. You want to try to minimize as much of that as possible with early detection. And thank you for sharing uh, the story of your family member and giving you uh, the inspiration and hope to uh, try to save uh, many, many other women in this battle uh, with cancer that affects millions of millions of people where uh, it's a story that has common threads and it doesn't matter if you're poor, middle class or a royal family member, it impacts so many people. Yes, it does. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that cancer is so indiscriminate. It hits all socioeconomic classes. It hits all ethnicities. It, it hits everyone of all ages. You know, you have pediatric cancers, then you have people that are elderly that develop tumors and leukemias and blood cancers. It is something that's truly indiscriminate. And, and, you know, last year alone, there were over 10 million recorded deaths in cancer. And there will be more unrecorded, uh, obviously, than, than will be recorded. So even at that rate, if you were to just look at the number of lives that will be lost to cancer over the next 100 years, just one short century, you know, 10 million lives per year, 100 years is 1 billion lives. That exceeds the most common estimates of total casualties of all wars in known human history. The best historians estimate that to be 350 to 400 million people. So cancer is something that is definitely attacking humanity and, and certainly needs to be addressed. Uh, ideally, with starting with early detection. Well, Summit Ride, thank you so much for coming on here on Live Now from Fox, uh, giving us some great insight on this uh, really tragic disease. And uh, we hope uh, for the very best. And uh, we thank you and your team for, for doing all that you do. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me very much. Absolutely. That was a long interview, but there was a lot of great content there. I wanted to share that with the audience. We're also seeing a lot of headlines about younger people mm -hmm. getting cancer. Why do you think that is? Oh, there's several reasons, uh, much of which is just a lack of understanding and a lack of information. And so first off, lifestyle habits for the younger population have changed dramatically over the course of human history. We're much more sedentary. That leads to metabolic diseases, heart disease, diabetes, insulin issues, all of which contribute to inflammation, which contributes to cancer. I think the second reason is we eat far too frequently. Uh, you know, that's kind of a construct from grocery stores starting in 1916 from the advent of Piggly Wiggly, when, you know, these notions of breakfast, lunch, and dinner came around. Again, for most of human history, we lived in periods of fast feasting and famine. And famine is important because it triggers biological processes in your body known as autophagy, auto self phagy eating, self-eating in Greek. And autophagy is essentially your internal recycling program. It's how your body goes in and destroys precancerous damaged cells, essentially, or cells that could turn into precancerous damaged cells. And we interrupt that by eating too frequently. I think the third is really reason is environmental exposure. There's a lot more toxicity. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, there was a story on, on acne, for example, uh, the benzoyl peroxide products that are used target you know, clear cell, target up and up, Estee Lauder Clinique, all those products have benzoyl peroxide in them. And one of the issues with that is benzoyl peroxide is not heat stable. So when they tested those products, they realized that they're turning into benzene, a highly toxic known carcinogen at orders of magnitude that are several hundred to several thousand times more than the acceptable limits. And to make matters worse, those products are being, being used primarily by teenagers. Teenagers are going through puberty. They have growth hormones surging through their blood. Growth hormone makes everything grow. 
good cells, bad cells, cancer cells, non-cancer cells. So when you take a highly known carcinogen and you apply it at thousands of times more concentration than you should to a teenager, for example, that has growth hormone surging through their blood, it's really no wonder that the incidence of cancer is rising so rapidly in the younger population. Well, and another thing about young people is they feel fairly, fairly bulletproof and they're like, no, I can't get cancer, I'm too young. And so often, even if they were um, suffering with something, they may not go ahead and get checked up. Yeah, they, they feel they're immune, right? So when you're young, you have this sort of superhuman type of mentality. But unfortunately, the reality is in the last 25 years, if you look at colon cancer, for example, the rates of colon cancer have doubled in the last 25 years in people under 55, which is generally early onset cancer. And so rates are rising rapidly in the younger population, making screening for the younger population more important than ever. Wow. We're almost out of time, um, Sumit. So let, let's give some final thoughts to the person who's watching this for the first time. Uh, what's the process like? They, get, they created an account on your website? Yeah, so you go to our website and basically you sign up, you schedule your date for your blood draw. Uh, we have mobile phlebotomy, which means someone would come to your doorstep if you'd like at your home, your office, wherever you'd like that to be, pull your blood. It only takes a few minutes. It's then sent to our lab, processed, and the results will be available to you in our portal two, three days later. Outstanding. Well, thank you so much for sharing your journey and um, for saving lives. I appreciate that. We're going to end for with, having me. You bet. We're going to end with the website, which is cancerchecklabs.com, the great Sumet Ride. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.